Hey guys, Gonzo. Uh, story time. I got some. I think what we got 17 questions. A couple of them have are multiple questions, so there's probably about 20 all together. So uh, let's get this started. I'm going to start this off the right way. Got a shot glass from Rodney. Oh, me nerves. Got my survival bracelet from Christian. Uh, I'm going to try the shot glass, so I'll make sure Rodney didn't uh, send me one that leaks. So we got a little uh, two shot bottle here of blue UV. Let's see how that goes down. I had to work last night, so this will probably uh, help me sleep a little bit better. Cheers, Rodney. Worked just fine. Yeah, little wash, little monster. Wow, okay, that worked. All right, here we go. A uh, couple shout outs, we'll, we'll get this thing started. Fishing for Life 98, Fishing Maniac 123, and Trout Boy 26. Trout Boy 26 uh, has got a good channel going on with some fishing and stuff. And, He's, uh, him and his dad did a lot of trapping last year, so I'm really looking forward to those uh, videos once you get them up. That'll be cool. And then we got uh, Survive Without, real good channel there. Talks about a lot of different plants and just outdoor bushcraft and stuff. I, I really enjoy his channel. And then we got Wyo Wilderness. Uh, Ray, he's out there in Wyoming, and uh, he just put a great video up today. Uh, he was out uh, cutthroat fishing. And you look in the background, you see the mountains, I mean, just the scenic, it was just, it was great. He had his family out there and stuff. He had his wife, uh, she had a rifle. They've been having a lot of bear problems out that way and stuff. Uh, great video, right? Then we got hair with the hide. And then we got the high mountain trapper. We got Kyle. Kyle just put a great video of two showing all his traps, his shed, his equipment. Uh, Kyle's ready, man. He can't wait, to, like me. I can't wait to get out there. And then uh, I'm waiting to see uh, the boss of the swamp. Check him out too. The guys just just put all new siding on his cabin a couple weeks ago and stuff. What, what a wonderful uh, channel the boss has got, man. All right, here we go. Backyard meat. What's my favorite animal? My least favorite animal to skin. Uh, hands down, a raccoon. They're just fat. They're greasy. They're slimy. Um, they get they get the lice on them. It just it, it's sickening, you know. So. If you ever get any uh, nice looking coons and they're full of lice, I'd suggest putting them in a bag and putting them in the freezer for the night. Get rid of the lice, at least most of them. Spray them with Raid, gets rid of them. It's <clears throat> a good question. I really don't like skinning raccoons, but they're supposed to be worth some decent money this year, so I'll be, I'll be catching them. Charles Nixon, what's my favorite trap supplies website? Uh, hands down f &T. I'm all the way up here, uh, as far west of Michigan as you can get. I've ordered traps um, from them in the morning, and I've had them here the next afternoon. So F and T hands down. Trapper and killer ten. Have ever been in a fight? <laughs> yeah, I've I've been in a few fights. Uh, actually, back in high school when I was a senior, uh, me and my best friend JJ got the stupid freaking fight in a uh, fight over a basketball game. I was kicked out, and uh, it was like uh, when everybody in school was going to fight, it was like at the county garage. So um, I totally forgot about it. After school, you know, we get down to the corner. My buddy's giving me a ride home. Look over at the county garage, and there's all these cars there just waiting for the fight. Of course, you know, I'm not going to back down. Stupid. So I go over there, and we start having words with each other, and uh, I push him, and he hits me right here. That tooth was in the back of my throat, so it wasn't worth it because by the end of the day, we were still best friends. And uh, my mom wasn't too happy, my dad, his mom and dad weren't too happy, and about six trips to the dentist to get a root canal done, and I got a fake tooth in there, and I got a peg. So yeah, I have, uh, not a great feeling. Haven't been in a fight in tons of years and stuff. Uh, part of growing up, I guess. 
Matthew Zupetz, what's my favorite thing to hunt? Rough grouse. I just love being out there, walking, flushing birds, shooting them on the wing, on the fly. Uh, just all around rough grouse. Love it. The past few years have been great up here. And uh, from the sound of them, drumming and the ones that I've seen this summer and stuff, looks like it's going to be a great year again. <clears throat> Outdoorsman 1515. What's the most animals I've ever caught in one season? Um, I don't know an exact number, but my baseball number is 44 because that's the most muskrats I've caught in a year. So I'd go 44 rats, uh, um, some skunks, um, some beavers, weasels, uh, raccoons. I, I would say between 60 and 70, um, maybe in the mid 70s, but somewhere's in there. Nothing great, just like I said, a hobby. Uh, something I enjoy doing, so. Hi Mountain Trapper, what's my favorite animal to catch? Bobcat. Love trapping bobcats uh, ever since the first one I've ever seen and started trapping them. Um, I've got 23 to date. I've let, fifth, I think 15 of them I've released. If they, in at least the 20 pound range, except the first one I ever caught, it was a 17 pound female. Other than that, I release them. And trust me, they're a pain in the ass to release. I've always used the blanket. Uh, you can't do it by yourself. You gotta get somebody else and you gotta go with them and stuff. And they're one mean animal. Even the small ones. If you catch a 15 pound cat, you, you wouldn't believe how strong they are. Horrible claws, teeth, and the sounds that they make. And you would think that they go up a tree right away when you let them go, they don't. They, they're gone. I've never ever seen one go up a tree when it's been released. Um, Tony Coyote Man. Does my wife hunt and trap with me? She hunts. We bear hunt together. Um, she's never been out deer hunting with me and she loves to bird hunt with me. We're all grouse hunting and stuff. She enjoys that trapping. Absolutely not. Just She just doesn't care to see uh, animals in a trap. But she doesn't despise it either. You know, she enjoys looking at the animals and hearing my stories when I come home. Great question. Fisherman Guy 44, what's my favorite trap? A bridger. I'd have to say uh, any type of bridger, but uh, bridger number three, four coil. All the bridgers that I had were two coil, and I got a hold of F&T last year, and I had them. Um, I got all my traps four coil now, so great trap, bridger. Get your money's worth too. They're not an expensive trap. They're not like a Oneida Victor or something. I love Victors, but don't get me wrong. Kronkis, 36. Have I ever went elk or moose hunting? No, but someday I hope to do both. Uh, right now, you know, money's tight and stuff. Uh, you know, I got kids in school, kids in sports, and just, you know, I'm all family oriented big time. But uh, once my kids get out of school and stuff, uh, I'm going to get out west and stuff. Ray. Um, I'll definitely be getting a hold of you, you know, getting elk hunt out of you and stuff, so. The Great Outdoors 91. How many inches was my brookie? Uh, just over 21 and a half. I, somewhere between 21 and a half and 22 inches, but it's a nice brookie. Fat, four pounds, four ounces. <clears throat> what's, what's the best trap for mink? Uh, that was another question by uh, The Great Outdoors 91. Uh, I would say 110 kind of bear, 120 at the biggest, and then I would say any type of number one trap. Um, I use Dukes and I use Victors. Great traps. Uh, I didn't catch a single mink last year, believe it or not. I had I got 24 box traps, uh, 24 boxes I made over here, filled every one of them full of kind of bears. But I think I did that too early in the season. I should have waited. I found out later on until there was snow on the ground and the rivers and creeks started icing up a little bit. Things will be different this year though, promise you. I'll have some good video for you. Fishing Maniac 123, what's my biggest walleye? 28 and a half inches, I got it in mid-February in about four feet of water on an orange jig and rapala. Not even any fight. Jigging my rapala, felt a little bump on it. Let it sit there for a second, jigged it again, it hit it. I pulled it up and it comes shooting out of the hole, just like a freaking uh, torpedo. Gave it to my buddy that I was fishing with. I, and I'd probably say it was probably somewhere between eight, eight and a half pounds. It was just a big fat female. Really nice walleye. 
golden brown or lake will give it beautiful. Jake McDonald, 97, wants to know my most interesting predator-prey relationship I've witnessed in outdoors. Um, I, I don't think anything um, out of the ordinary. Uh, I drove up on a coyote one time. I don't even think he knew I was there. I was trying to get a mouse. And I was watching it pounce. And then we'd be looking in the long grass and it would pounce again. And then I drove up a little bit closer and then it noticed me. And it took off. But I got to watch that a couple times. Um, out at one of my bow stands, I had a big horned owl that would hang around. I was on the edge of a swamp and there was a lot of hemlocks there and stuff. And I watched a weasel chase a shoe all around a stump one time and caught it. And at that same exact stand, the same year I was hunting it, uh, that owl that was there, um, I'd watched him pick off a couple red squirrels. These owls are so quiet, he would just come gliding in like this great big uh, stealth, I don't know, uh, airplane or something, just quiet and he'd just sit there. And the squirrels would chirp and everything, they'd run, sooner or later they'd come back out. One would make a mistake and he'd come down and nail them right off the corner and apples and they had no idea he was even coming, just boom, and he had them. But here's a story for you. Uh, this was, I would say, 10 years ago with an ex-girlfriend. I was in Boulder Junction, Wisconsin. I just got done dropping my boys off with my mom. We're coming back. I thought my ex-girlfriend was sleeping. And I watched this black mountain lion, pitch black, black panther, whatever you want to call it, come middle of the day, come right out into the road, to the middle of the road, right in front of me, flips around and shoots back in the woods with the tail that long on it, pitch black now, uh, and I wasn't going to say anything. And she's like, oh my God, did you just see that black panther? And I'm like, yes, I did. Uh, I thought you were sleeping. I wasn't going to say a word. And I don't even think I told anybody for four or five years like that. And now the last couple of years, there's been a lot of sightings, trail cameras and stuff in upper Michigan here. Um, they think that there's so many mountain lions and cougars, pumas, whatever you want to call them, out in the Dakotas, that they're pushing them down this way through Wisconsin and Minnesota. So they're around, but to see a black one like that, that was really something different. But my mom, she lives in uh, Lady Smith, Wisconsin. And one of the ladies that she works with at Hawkins Windows, um, they got pictures of two of them on their, uh, they video recorded it out in their farm field. Two pure black panthers walking along the edge of it, right by their garage and stuff. So they're round, but the most common ones are the brown ones. Um, so uh, I hope that answers your question, Jake. Uh, that was off the subject a little bit, but um, the coyote one, the owl. I seen a, I seen an eagle grab a duck off the lake Wilgibbic one time. That was pretty neat too, but not nothing out of the ordinary. And I've seen many hawks flying with. Uh, snakes in their talons and stuff. Matter of fact, I seen one a few weeks ago, a uh, little hawk come over to the house here, must have a small garter snake or a, a copper belly in its talons. JV fins and furs. Do I like up do I like to upland bird hunt? Love it. Grouse hunt. Nothing better. And have I ever thought about becoming a guide for hunting or fishing? I'd love to. I, I there would be nothing better than to spend my life guiding and hunting, fishing. Um, I, uh, I've guided a lot of guys. I've guided some to bear hunts and they were successful. And deer hunts, the biggest buck I've ever shot is a five pointer, believe it or not. But I've guided three different guys to eight pointers. So, kind of got the job done. Um, I've got a friend right now, Pro Fisherman Jones. Uh, he was doing a lot of musky fishing last year, and a lot of you guys might know him. I talk with him all the time on the computer. He hasn't been putting out many videos at all, but he got a guiding job. And he's uh, been on Lake of the Woods since the ice got out. And he's going to be fishing on there guiding until the ice gets back on. So, uh, good job. I, I, I'm glad he's, he's doing what he loves to do. So, I, I'm really happy for him. Maple Creek Outdoors. Can we still bait deer in Michigan? Yep, we're allowed two gallons of bait and it's got to be spread out. I think it's over a 10 foot by 10 foot area. So if you take corn, I mean I spread mine out a lot more than that. I'll throw it over a 20, 30 foot area, two gallons, just to make the deer
go through the leads and everything and stuff. Uh, so we're allowed to as of right now. Lower Michigan, I don't know. They weren't, but I think they're they're allowed to again now. And Maple Creek Outdoors wants to know, if I hunt ducks, what's the most commonly bagged ducks? Uh, I love to hunt ducks. I haven't did a lot of it uh, the last couple of years. Me and my son have. I'm just getting back into it again. Uh, we do a lot of pond jumping. And it's either mallards or wood ducks. Um, we shoot some other ducks off and on and stuff, but the, your mallards, um, there's a lot of mallards around here, and your wood ducks. Uh, we're, we can walk the river and stuff. You know, there's a lot of spots that I knew when I was a kid that we go, and uh, there ain't nothing prettier than shooting a beautiful green-headed mallard or a male uh, wood duck. That's probably one of my next ducks to get uh, mounted, is one of them too. Actually, I don't have a duck mounted. Those are one of my next uh, mounts are going to be that after my brook troll. They eat the ADK Trapper. Have you ever seen anything I cannot explain outdoors? Like a Bigfoot or lights in the sky or anything? I can't say I have. I've never seen anything that, I mean, you see an airplane or something. I'm not one of those guys that's going to fabricate a story and uh, tell you that I've seen Bigfoot run across the road or in a lake or something. But uh, good question. I wish I could sh share a story with you, Garrett, but I, I can't, but sorry. Dustin Peters. Do I do any snaring? Um, I haven't snared since I was a kid. I used to snare a lot of rabbits back then. But this uh, past winter, I've uh, contacted a lot of channels that do a lot of snaring. Um, and I'm going to get into it. But here in uh, Michigan, if you snare, we can't start till after January 1st, and it's got to be on private property. So I've got some private property to snare. I bought myself uh, 500 feet of 332nd inch cable. I bought three different kind of snare locks. I've got seven dozen of them. So I'm going to make myself some snares and I'm going to get some deer carcasses and I'm going to go down this farm this guy owns and I'm going to set some uh, snares and stuff. So hopefully I'll have some video of that for you guys too. Rodney Newberry. Um, Rodney wants to know, is there many coyotes around my area? Tons of them. When I'm out on the lakes fishing and stuff, uh, you might not hear a peep. You hear the birds, the frogs, the bugs. And all of a sudden, it takes one coyote to light up, and a whole pack will light up on one side of the lake. Another pack will light up on the other side, and they'll just start going back and forth. Uh, the most I've ever heard are three different packs going off at one time. So we've got plenty of coyotes. Actually, uh, right down the road here on my way to work, uh, yesterday morning, there was a coyote pop hit. I seen it on the side of US 2, right by Marinesco. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick story <coughs> about drinking beer. Uh, me and a bunch of my buddies were sitting at my mom's house um, playing quarter bounce. I don't know if uh, who knows how to do that or not, but you take a glass, you fill it up, half three quarters full of beer, and you try and bounce a quarter in there. If you get it in there, you can pick anybody else at the table to drink it. If you miss the quarter, you can chance it, and if you miss it again on the, the second bounce, you have to drink it yourself. Well, my buddy makes a quarter one day into the glass, picks me to drink it, the phone rings, I get up, I answer the phone, and I'm talking on it, and I go to drink, and I'm drinking my beer, and then he pretends he's going to punch me in the stomach, and the corner goes down inside my uh, esophagus. I'm thinking it's in my stomach, and two, three, four days, whatever, you know, I'm just going to pass it. Well, we finished the beer off, and we're sitting there watching TV, maybe sipping on a couple beers yet. I was only like 18 years old. And uh, my mom was in Marquette for the weekend at her sister's house. Well, thank God she came home because within two hours, my chest was in such pain, I just, I, I couldn't take it anymore. I told my mom what happened. She called the hospital. Uh, they said to get me up there right away. So I went up there, they took an x-ray. They could actually see the quarter inside of me. It was stuck on my third lung, or not my third lung, my third uh, rib. So the doctor, what he thought he was gonna do, retard, stuck this huge tube up my nose and put all kinds of petrol, petroleum jelly up there and he's trying to knock it off, you know, and I'm gagging, you know, and he's poking around in there and it hurt it, just massively, it hurt bad. Well, uh, <clears throat> after that wasn't working, two, three hours later, he goes, well, uh, I think what we're going to do is stick a tube down your throat, we're going to numb your throat, we're going to stick a tube down there, we're going to stick a light down there in the camera and I'll pull it out that way. So they numb my throat up, they stick a tube down my throat, uh, in goes these two little 
things, these little pincher things, and a camera down the tube. And there's a little TV inside. You could see everything. You could see the quarter down there. And he grabs it, he pulls the quarter out and the light out, and he says, when I pull this tube out of your throat, you might throw up, so be ready for that. I'm like, all right. So he starts pulling that tube out, and all the beer that was inside me went all over the place. So we learned after that night of playing quarter bounce to bounce into a cup and have a separate cup for each player and drink our own beers that way. So the moral of the story is, don't bounce a quarter in a cup and drink it because you might not always pass it. If my mom wasn't there, uh, you could see inside after you pulled the quarter out, before you pulled the tube out, there was a ring already there. He said that would have wore right through and he said I would have been in big trouble after that. Things wouldn't have been good. So I don't want to think how bad they could have been or whatever. But anyways, that's story time for this week. Uh, um, Got 200 and some hits on it, so it seems to be going good. And if we hit 200 again, we'll do it again next week. So get your questions in. I'll get your answers. And uh, I'll try to think of something else to tell you guys. So until then, peace.